away. I'm gonna go get me some clothes. Right now, um, all of my clothes are in the bus. What to wear, what to wear. I think I got a pair of shorts today, so I just need a shirt. for a walk. Okay. I'm gonna have me a cup of tea. I've had a couple people ask me to do a Q&A. I haven't done a Q&A in a while. Now that we're back and we're settled down for a minute, I'll look up uh, what questions. I haven't even been active. I've been just posting and not really uh, able to do anything else. I've read the comments, but I haven't been able to uh, answer because I I'm lacking internet. Here's got a banjo. Pete's taking a look at for. Needs to come up and then have a bigger shim of wood put in. Mm -hmm. Looks a little rusty too. Yeah, let's take it to the shop and clean it up and do it there. So Casey uh, O'Donnell, Casey O'Donnell asked, "Just curious, what kind of boat do you have? It is truly a work of art, and keep the videos coming." Norna is a one-off design. She was built by a man named Fleming Jorgensen. Uh, she is a lap strake hull, uh, wood. It's a gaff rigged cutter is what she's considered, but she's also got a yard arm, which has two square sails that hang on either side of the mast, kind of like a Viking ship. I always thought of, um, putting red and white, uh, making the sails look red and white. To, um, to make her really look like a Viking ship with her square sails. Found out from the guys on Flickeroy that Norna was originally a fruit delivery boat in Denmark. So that's kind of interesting to find out about that. Mobile Tech, I just wanted to read these comments. I'm just going to read them to you because um, I really liked it. Uh, Mobile Tech said, When I was sailing my dad's yawl, we had only a compass and charts. Cell phones and GPS had not entered the scene yet. That was 40 years ago. It's great to see you guys out at sea finally. Fair winds, the three of you. And I wrote back, Yeah, we sailed the Atlantic with paper charts, dividers, and parallel rulers. We did, however, have a GPS, but no blinky dot conveniently showing us where we are. Which was very nice to have. Especially traveling around Maine. Um, I think a lot of the places that we went, we probably wouldn't have went to because of, you know, having all tight spaces and, and, and trying to, you know, plot the course every half hour, 15, every five seconds. I'm really glad that I had the chart plotter this time. It really, really, really made things so much nicer. Brian Gilson asked, uh, is the CD or songs on the CD available in any other format? Not yet, but I did mention maybe in two or three months that we would um, put them onto maybe iTunes or something. Uh, so I do need to work on that. That'll be the next project to do. Um, I've got all, everything lined up to do it. it uh, I just ran out of time before we left to uh, go up to Maine. I guess I should clarify a few things. Uh, Ava is my stepdaughter. Um, it, she is Pete's daughter. There you go. Me now said, the inner jib is blocking the outer jib. That doesn't make sense. They're designed to work together. The thing that I think maybe was misunderstood about it is here's the outer jib and here's the inner jib. When the winds are coming from behind or slightly on the quarter, sometimes the outer jib doesn't get any wind because the inner jib is filling all the wind. So sometimes the outer jib is doing nothing. And what we do is drop our inner jib so that our outer jib can get the wind. Our outer jib actually has um, the most power to pull the boat forward than the inner jib. If we only had the inner jib, um, she would move too slow. Sometimes with the inner jib what we'll do is if it's super windy out uh, and we're moving forward too fast, um, 
will drop the outer jib and leave the inner jib up and then that'll slow us down a lot. But yeah, they do work together sometimes. It just depends on, and, and most of the time, um, it just depends on the wind angle and, and how good the winds are or how strong or light they are. Um, and what situation we're in, what angle we need to sail at too. Chris Static Nachos wrote, I love your videos. I hope you. I hope to have my own boat one day and live aboard her as well. Do you ever miss a house? Now that I'm in a house, <laughs> I would say yeah, definitely. It's really convenient to um, be still and not worry about rain and weather. At the time when I was living on a boat, not really. Um, my boat was my home. Uh, it was really nice to live a self-sustaining life. We lived on solar and wind, we had a composting toilet, um, collected rainwater. I definitely want to do that in a house. That would be really cool to be self-sufficient in a house. So we are thinking about maybe getting some land in Maine to make a self-sustaining house. Jack Neff wrote, why no self-steering vane like the Nautilus or another makes life so much easier? I've used sheet detiller with surgical rubber tubing to apply pressure. Hand steering is boring and tiresome. Yeah, we actually, uh, that's what we did with sheet detiller. Mm -hmm. um, because what happened was before we left to go to Maine, our autopilot broke. Literally, I think it was like the day before we were going to leave. So we just decided the quickest, easiest route to, uh, to go with was the sheet detiller. And yes, hand steering is very boring. Um, I would say uh, we do want to do a wind vane. I think we're going to do something like that. We'll probably make our own and then try to make it work. Uh, so yeah, we are, are thinking about that. Terry Skeens asked, question mates, in the video, Courtney, you look like you had a lot of sweat on you. Was that sweat, is it really hot out on the water like that, even though there was a nice breeze? And do you have a leash on Layla or just a life jacket? Yes, I was sweating. I think we were um, right off of Georgia or something in that video, and it was very hot offshore. There really wasn't a lot of wind, um, and it was definitely the middle of summer. So yeah, I was definitely sweating. Um, I also use coconut oil for sunscreen, so a lot of times I think that uh, looks like sweat, but it's actually coconut oil to protect from the sun. So about Layla, uh, yeah, sometimes it just depends on the sea state and how we feel if, you know, if she were to jump overboard, if we could actually turn around and get her. Um, yeah, sometimes a leash might be more dangerous, uh, depending on the situation. Yeah, we would have the life jacket on her, and if it got really rough out, I would attach a leash to her. DDM220 asks, Looks like a smooth sailing boat. Does she handle well in rough seas? We got her in about, what, 15 footers when we were uh, crossing the Atlantic. Yeah, she definitely um, handles well. Granted, we didn't hand steer. Yeah, we didn't hand steer when we were crossing the Atlantic. We actually had our autopilot um, that steered for us, so I don't really know how she handled in rough seas because I didn't really handle her. The autopilot well, you did. Didn't tell about how to ride. Yeah, there were a couple times where we um, we had our, our square sails out and uh, we noticed behind us that she was kind of S'ing a little bit. Uh, she was going a little too fast. Um, we haven't got her in too rough of seas. We don't really want to get her in rough seas if we can help it, but um, I think the boat can handle it a lot more than we can, obviously. Skeens asked, well I know nothing about being out to sea, but what was that buoy out there in the ocean for? Someone not paying attention or asleep could hit it. That's what we're saying. <laughs> what buoy? That one that wasn't lit. Oh, that giant thing. Yeah, we passed by. That was a buoy, that was a freaking... Yeah. We passed by this giant light. Or was it a light? Or what the heck was that? Was that, that ting or, or a foghorn or a light? It's on the chart, um, I think, that. And usually, yeah, usually they're on the chart. I don't really know what the buoys are for. Some of them are for, like, marking the... This is for offshore buoys. Maybe some are marking inlets. Some might be just marking territory. Yeah, some territory. just the territorial boundary. Yeah, I don't know. I just want to read this, this comment. I really like it. This is from Michael Lewis. He said, I have to admire you, and I count you as family. 
Fuel storage less than 50 gallons and sailing transatlantic. 43 days in ramen noodle diet at the end. Faith is a very hard thing to maintain, but the mailbox and debit is just as hard to maintain. I think he means debt. I think he meant to write debt. The ocean and its freedom and its beauty only a few know. To explain the f that freedom and the hardships that go with the sailing life is too much for those that have never experienced true freedom or a life that is without a mailbox or an ATM and banking interest, lawyer suits and political agenda. Norna is a work in progress, no different than our lives. I wish you the very best and pray for good winds and Godspeed. Leave the mailbox behind you. Just saying, life is too short to sit at the mailbox or computer awaiting someone to stamp you with their approval. Pete has that of a trade. Courtney, you have acquired that of trade through time. These trades are valuable anywhere you go on the planet. Stepping out in faith is what you did years ago. Don't stop now. Head to the wood shop, I think, or are we running some errands? I'll go to Napa first. Okay, so I think we're going to run some errands this morning. Now a gas stage, we got to get gas more often than we really need to. But first we got to get gas because we don't know how good our gas mileage yet is yet. We got to get used to that again since we don't have a gas gauge. I'm going to clean up Pete's shop today. Well, there's that. Seems like a leak. I think, I don't think they're supposed to be playing that. The one Pete got has play for some reason. In the old one, there was no play in it, so he's worried that it'll leak. There's no play because there's like a little nubbin right there to stop it from moving around. And this one, it's like, and you try tightening it down, and it's not. Lunch stuff and some waters. open the door and just like boom <laughs> holy crap it's rough right now out there